Morning, everyone. Are we awake? Mostly. <laughs> Mostly awake. Today, the first day back isn't hard for me to wake up. It's the second day back that gets me. I was so excited for school last night. I couldn't fall asleep at all. <laughs> My kids were ready to go back too. I don't think they were super excited about getting up early, but they were excited about, I think, just interacting with people again. Like, we just stayed home and just really did hardly anything at all. We went to my parents' house. I have a niece and a nephew, so there's five kids total. Um, and so my three and then they're my sister's two. And we made gingerbread houses, which was like the highlight of the break. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Caused me a lot of stress and anxiety. There was a lot of mess. One time you have five kids make gingerbread houses and whoo. But they liked it. All right, so did I miss Lindsay? Lindsay, no, not yet. And then Brooklyn. Not yet. All right, did everyone have a good break? Anything exciting you want to share? We just stayed home all break, and that did was recorded. Yeah. My son is five. He'll be six in January, and um, he likes to play chess. Okay, I don't know how to play chess. So my dad was trying to teach him, and he's pretty good. I mean, for a five-year-old as far as, like, remembering how, where each piece goes and what the rules are. So um, we were playing. My dad got him this game. It's called um, No Stress Chess. Okay, so you can play chess like you normally would, but they also have this version of it where you draw a card and it tells you which piece you have to move. Like, you don't get a choice. Um, so, if, you know, if you draw a pawn, then you have to move only the way that pawns can. And then if you draw a rook, you can only use, you know, go whatever the rook does. So it's, it's a little bit for, more for beginners, and each card tells you exactly what to do. Thank goodness. So I'm playing this no-stress chess with my five-year-old, who has played with my dad quite a bit and actually beaten my dad. And my dad's not a dumb man. Um, so... I'm trying to play and I goof up the pawn. Like I didn't understand how the pawn went. Like you have to, you can go straight, but if you're gonna take somebody's piece, you have to do like a diagonal move. Okay, so I goofed it up. He's yelling at me like, mom, that's not what it says. Like you gotta fix that. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm trying to learn. He's getting all worked up. I'm like, look here, Bobby Fisher, like back off, I'm trying to learn. So then he's like, oh, well, I'm not Bobby Fisher, but do you guys know who Bobby Fisher is? I don't. No? Nobody does? Okay, I'm old. All right, so Bobby Fisher was like 12 or 13. I feel like this happened back in the 80s, but he became like the chess grand champion of the world. Like he beat this Russian for um, like the grand title. Like it was a huge ordeal. Um, he, they made a movie about it. It's either called like I think it's called Finding Bobby Fisher, or it's either Finding Bobby Fisher or Searching for Bobby Fisher. Okay, so he's this, you know, kid who's a chess prodigy. But my son, Albright, kept telling me, my name's not Bobby. I'm like, okay, I only called you Bobby Fisher once, so dial it back there, buddy. But that's what I played a lot of over break. I'm still not very good. He did beat me most of the time. What can I say? Maybe someday he will be like some genius and he'll support me in my old age. And when I have to go into a nursing home, maybe it'll be a nice nursing home. I don't know. All right. Um, so today we're going to, whoops, I don't need to join twice. Hold on. There we go. All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to start the next chapter in our book, which deals with triangles. Okay, um, so I'm going to do a little bit more teaching today than what I've done lately anyways. Um, I also want to talk to you about exams. 
Okay, so did everybody see that note that came out that we're not gonna have exams, or at least hear from somebody? Okay, so we are not having exams. So what that means is that your grade is based on your first nine weeks and your second nine weeks. Okay, and they'll be averaged together. Now, the good news and the bad news about that is if you had an A and a B, it would naturally round to an A. But that being said, or if you had like an A and a C, it would round to a B. If you are on the borderline, let's say you have an A and a B, our computer system will round that to an A, but understand the teacher has the right to go in and round that down to a B. So I'm telling you this because like if you all of a sudden ghost me for the next two, three weeks of the nine weeks, just because you have the grades that you want doesn't mean your average is gonna work out the way you want, okay? So make sure you're still really paying attention to that, not just in my class, but other classes as well, okay? So like if, you have, if you're in chemistry and you have an A and a B, now, if your B is because you were working hard and you just didn't do as well, that's, that's one thing. But if it's because like you just stopped working, teachers have the right to then round down instead of rounding up. Okay, so beware of that. Um, I have not started grading your projects yet. I, I did a few on Friday, or on that Tuesday, which was kind of like a Friday, but <laughs> that Tuesday. Um, I started grading some, I didn't get very far because I really want to take some time to look at them. And quite frankly, I just enjoyed my break and didn't do hardly any schoolwork, which I'm paying for today, but I did it. Okay, so I'll start looking at those, but start watching your grades, guys, because your grades aren't typically what they, what typically is in honors geometry and for compared to what you did last nine weeks, okay? So if you have missing work, get that in. Okay, because we're coming up to the end here pretty quickly. We only have like two and a half weeks or so, right? So watch your grades. Um, any questions before we get started on the material today? All right. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. And then um, I did post the notes in Google Classroom for you. Um, and this will also all be recorded so that um, if you need to go back and look at it, you can as well. Remember, I keep posting those videos in, um, in our Google Classroom. I have that running doc. Okay, so today what we're going to do, um, there's one thing we're going to learn that probably not going to be surprised and the other that you might be surprised at. So we're going to be talking about triangles to start with and some measurements that go along with triangles. And then we're gonna work into proving that triangles are congruent, that they're the exact same size. Okay, so first we're gonna to start today with talking about the sum of all the angles. Okay, it's called the triangle angle sum conjecture or theorem, okay, whichever you prefer to call it. It says the sum of the measures of the angles in every triangle is 180 degrees. And I'm sure no one is shocked by this information, right? Like this has been, this has been in your, in your toolbox for quite a while. So what I wanna do with it really is show you why that is. Okay, so we're gonna look at the why of it today. So um, if we were in class, I would have you cut out a triangle and label the three corners one, two, and three, okay? Then what we would do is we would literally rip off the three corners, okay? And then this becomes trash, we don't need this piece. But what I wanna do is focus on the three corners, which is really the three angles of our triangle. Notice if I line them up like so, so put the vertices with the vertices, and line up the edges with the edges or the rays with the rays, whatever you wanna call them, oops. Notice that they form a straight line, right? So it goes from one end of the protractor to the other, which is 180 degrees, All right? So that is kind of a, oops, oh boy. Oh my gosh, I'm out of control. That's kind of a visual representation of why the three angles add up to be 180 degrees, okay? But I also wanna do an actual geometric proof as far as why they add up to 180 degrees. 
right? So we're gonna look at this proof here to show that the three angles of, of any triangle will add up to 180 degrees. So our given here is we have triangle ABC with EC parallel to AB. So we have AB here and we have EC here. These lines are parallel. All right, so any proof that we do, I feel like we've done a few proofs, right? I think we have. I'm confusing this geometry class and the other one. But any proof we start with, we start with um, our givens. Okay, so I just have triangle ABC with EC parallel to AB, and that's given. All right, so now I want to start looking at my picture over here to figure out if I have any congruent angles, if I have any angle relationships. Um, one big thing is I have parallel lines here. So remember, we talked about a lot of special angles when it came to parallel lines. In fact, I see one of those special angles here. Angle one and angle four, those are gonna be congruent because of alternate interior angles. Okay, now we always abbreviate as AIA. Okay, so AIA stands for alternate interior angles. Okay, so angles one and four here are congruent. I also see another set of alternate interior angles with three and five. So I make a similar statement here, that angle three is congruent to angle five, again, because of AIA, alternate interior angles. Okay, so those are my only alternate interior angles. One other thing I do notice is that all three of these angles actually form a line, right? Kind of like what we just did with that triangle where I tore off the corners. All right, so I'm gonna make a statement here that angle one plus angle two plus angle three add up to be 180 degrees. Now, this is not a linear pair because pair means two. There's not a good name for this, so we can just say um, angles that form a line equals 180 degrees, so because the angles form a line. Okay, so now, keeping in mind that my proof statement here says angle two plus angle four plus angle five equals 180, this last statement is similar in that I have three angles equaling 180, right? But I don't really want angle one. I don't really want angle three. But if you notice up here, angle one and four are interchangeable because they're congruent, okay? Angles three and five are congruent, so they're gonna be interchangeable. So instead of writing angle three, I can write angle five. Instead of writing angle one, I can do an angle four. So I can actually make that last statement. Angle two plus angle four plus angle five equals 180. And here I just did the substitution property of equality. For some reason I can't spell substitution today. All right, so again, notice I just swapped out for one, I did four, right? And for angle, three, I did angle five. All right, so this is mathematically or algebraically why the three angles of a triangle add up to be 180 degrees. Again, I know you're not surprised by it, but it's important for us to understand where that comes from. Any questions so far? All right, the next um, property we're gonna look at here it's called the third angle conjecture. It says if two angles of one triangle are equal in measure to two angles of another triangle, then the third angle in each triangle, the third angles are congruent. Okay, so here it said like if I have a 40 degree angle and a 40 degree angle and a 50 degree angle and a 50 degree angle, then we're saying this un unlabeled angle here, they must be congruent which mathematically would make sense, right? Because I'm taking 180 minus 40 minus 50, and here I'm taking 180 minus 40 minus 50, and I would get 90 for both, okay? But this is one very specific triangle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prove it for both. 
I mean for any triangle. Okay, so we're gonna prove it for any triangle. So I have here triangle ABC and XYZ. I'm telling you that angle A is congruent to angle X, I'm telling you that B is congruent to Y. I want to prove that angle C is congruent to angle Z. All right, so with any proof, we start out with our givens. So we have that angle A and X are congruent and that B and Y are congruent. So I have B is congruent to Y and A is congruent to X. Okay, so that is part of my given. So I'm going to bring those over. Okay, so now what we're going to end up doing here is a substitution eventually, but we need to start talking about, I have all my angle relationships named, so now I need to look at individual triangles. I know that the sum of all the angles should equal 180 degrees. That's my triangle angle sum. That's true for triangle ABC and for triangle XYZ. Okay, so both of those are because of the triangle angle sum. Now, what happened here is that both of these statements are equal to 180, right? So A plus B plus C equals 180, but X plus Y plus Z equals 180. So because they both equal 180, that means they have to equal each other. So this is a substitution here. So I can now say that A plus B plus C is equal to X plus Y plus Z. And what I've done is I've done the substitution property. All right, now, this next step, I'm going to use my congruent statements up here to replace some of my letters. Okay, so instead of B, I wanna call that Y. Okay, so B and Y here are interchangeable. So I'm gonna replace B with Y. Oh, no, wait, I did it the other way. I wanna replace Y with B, sorry. Let me undo that. So I'm gonna replace Y with B. And I'm going to replace X with A. All right, so I'm going to replace X with A. So when I do that, it's just that substitution, right? Because they're congruent, we can flip-flop them out. So now angle A plus angle B plus angle C will equal, instead of X, I put A. Instead of Y, I put B. And then I have angle Z. So that, again, is my substitution property. Now, because I have an angle A on both sides, and I have an angle B on both sides, I can subtract them away, and that'll give me angle C is congruent to angle Z, and that was just my subtraction property. Okay, so now the third angle conjecture to me seems like common sense. Like it's one of those like, well, of course, but um, it pops up every once in a while and it's handy every once in a while. There's a couple of, of times where, where it's helpful, but that is called the third angle conjecture. All right, so what I want you to do is take a second here. If you have scrap paper or whatever, I want you to try to solve for um, all these variables here. Okay, we have X, Y, Z, and W. So take a minute, grab a calculator if you need it or your phone in order to calculate it. I want you to find the values of W, X, Y, and Z.
Would anyone like more time? Sorry, it's so hard to judge on here. Okay, so let's talk about these. If you want me to stop, then just tell me. Um, okay, so the first one here, you would literally just take 180 minus 73 minus 60. If you do that, you should have 47 degrees. This one, we have 180 minus 90 minus 30, and you should have, oops, 60 degrees. On this one here, notice I have Z and Z. That means because they're the same variable, they have to be the same value, right? So that means Z plus Z plus 40 would equal 180. So that means that 2Z would equal, if I subtract 40, I'd have 140. So each Z has to be 70 degrees. Okay, and then the last one here, I'd have W plus a 2W plus a 3W would equal 180. If I add those together, I have 6W equals 180. So W then would be 30. So if you wanted to find the measure of your angle, you'd have 30. This one would be 60. Oh gosh, 60, and this one would be 90. Again, probably not a big surprise on this. Any questions on finding the measure of missing angles? Okay, um, so this is what might be new for you. So when we have any polygon, and if we extend a side, we create what's called an exterior angle. Okay, so this is called an exterior angle. These two angles together, remember, would be a linear pair, but this is the exterior angle. Now, over here, so this is adjacent, this angle right here is adjacent to my exterior angle. The non-adjacent angles are called remote angles. Okay, they're called the remote angles. So the idea of a remote control is so that you don't have to be at your TV to change the channel, right? Okay, so the remote angles cannot be touching your exterior angle. Just like you don't want to have to touch the TV to change the channel. Okay, so the remote angles are over here. Now, what's so special about those remote angles is that the sum of the two remote angles equals your exterior angle. So remote one plus your remote two. So the first angle and the second angle together will equal my exterior angle. Okay, so that might be something that's a little bit different. So if I look over here, um, look, at, look at this bottom one here. We look at the bottom one. Because 110 is my exterior angle, I can then solve for my remote angle. So A plus 80 would equal 110. And then I can subtract 80 and get 30. Maybe. There we go. Okay, now, here's the thing with the remote angles. A lot of times you don't have to use the idea of the remote angles unless, if it's algebraic, it's way easier, like if I give you expressions, okay? But keep in mind, I do know that this is a linear pair, right? So that's 180 degrees, and if I take 180 minus 110, that would give me 70, and then I can just use my triangle, my triangle angle sum, okay? But I want you to try to use that remote angle. So here, this remote angle B would be equal to my two, I'm sorry, my exterior angle B would be equal to the sum of my two remote angles. So it would be 90 plus 35, which would give me 125. All right, now I brought this one in here because um, this one doesn't have the exterior angles the way we were just looking at. But I wanted to remind you, don't forget that vertical angles are congruent, right? So I can solve for X first. Here I have two unknowns, so I can't solve for this first. But let's solve for x first. So we have a total of 130, so 180 minus 130 gives me 50. And then our vertical angles are congruent, so this has to be 50 as well. And now I have another triangle, All right? So 180 minus 40 minus 50, that would give me 90. Questions on the relationship of the remote angles? All right, so then the last thing I want to do is we want to prove that the exterior angle is actually equal to the two remote angles. So I told you it was, and we used it. 
and we kind of looked at problems where it worked out, but I, let's prove it for all triangles. Okay, so again, we're gonna start with our givens. So we have triangle ABC with exterior angle BCD. So meaning I've extended this side, I've created this angle four here. Okay, so that's given. All right, so let's think about what properties we have here. I see a triangle, I know about a triangle's angles, and I see a linear pair here. So let's make some statements. I know that angle one plus angle two plus angle three, oops, that's an equal sign, plus angle three would equal 180 degrees, but that's the triangle angle sum. Okay, so I know one plus two plus three has to equal 180 degrees. Now, we're kind of on the right track for one and two here, but I need to somehow get an angle four over here. So I need to make some sort of statement about angles three and four. So I have angle three plus angle four will equal 180 degrees, and that's our linear pair conjecture. Do you remember that, our linear pair theorem? Remember we talked about LP stand for linear pair? We did a couple of those proofs with um, special angles. Okay, so we have one plus two plus three equals 180, and we have three plus four equals 180. Well, this is another one of those situations where since they both equal 180, they have to equal each other. Okay, so now I can say that angle one plus angle two plus angle three is gonna equal angle three plus angle four, that's substitution. All right, so now look how close I am. I have one plus two equals four. That's what I want. Well, my problem is this three on each side, but because I have a three on each side, I can subtract it away, All right? So I have angle one plus angle two is gonna equal angle four, and that's the subtraction property of equality. So algebraically and mathematically, that's why this works. That's why the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remotes. All right, so a lot of review, a little bit new. Any questions on that? Okay, I have posted for you in um, Google Classroom a Google form okay, with triangle angle sum and the exterior angles. So I think there are like 17 problems maybe, 16 problems something to that effect. Most of them are very quick. Like just make sure you have a calculator out and you're gonna get through them quickly. All right, any questions for me today? Okay, you're welcome to go, you're welcome to stay on, but you need to work on that Google form. See ya, thank you. See ya, have a good day. Bye, Miss Seringa. Bye, have a good day. Have a good day. Thanks, you too. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.